Hey hey guys, Adam514 here with another technical video. In this video we shall explore the mysteries of drag on aircraft. As always, I'll explain step by step what's going on without going too deep into the details of the physics and aerodynamics involved. I hope you find it educational. Let's start with our first graph. This is a graph of the drag as a function of speed for the P-51D30 which was built with the aircraft coefficients from the War Thunder flight model data files. The red curve represents the zero lift drag, which means all the drag that does not come from lift. Fuselage, tail, antennas, gears, pylons all interact with the airflow and create a zero lift drag. The yellow curve represents the lift induced drag, which is the drag due to the generation of lift. The more you need to point your nose up to stay in level flight, the more induced drag is generated. That's why the yellow curve begins at high drag and reduces when the speed increases as you need a lower angle of attack to stay in level flight. The blue curve is simply the sum of the red and yellow curves. The speed where the red and yellow curves intersect is the minimum drag speed, which is the best glide speed for the aircraft. For propeller driven aircraft, it is also very close to the optimal climb speed for that aircraft. So let's test our graph. To do that, we'll see what thrust the D30 generates at its top speed of around 620 km per hour at sea level, and then we'll see if that thrust corresponds to the drag of the D30 on the graph. The D30 generates 691 kg of thrust, which is 6.9 kN of thrust, and thrust equals drag at top speed. We'll draw a horizontal line from 6.9 kN of drag until it meets the blue curve, and then we'll go down vertically to see the corresponding speed. It corresponds to around 620 km per hour. The graph works! Now that we have understood the basics, let's draw the same graph for the F-86. The F-86 generates nearly 27 kilonewtons of thrust at its top speed. Let's see what speed that corresponds to. It corresponds to nearly 1400 km per hour, faster than the Mitsubishi T2 and definitely supersonic. Something interesting is going on here. Let's investigate further with our next graph. To make this graph, I flew the F-86 in test flight at different throttle settings, starting at 40% and ending at 100%, and recorded the top speed and thrust for each throttle setting, which gives the seven purple stars on the graph. As you can see, the first three stars follow the blue curve very closely. Starting at the fourth star, there's a sharp increase in drag that diverges from the blue curve. At 100% throttle, the top speed is correct at 1,105 km per hour. What's going on here? Did I make a mistake in the graph? Nah. Did gauging artificially increase the drag of the F-86 so that it has the right top speed? Find out with the next graph. This is a graph of the drag coefficient CD as a function of Mach number for the seven test flight stars. Don't be afraid of this coefficient, it's simple. Simply put, the influence of speed is removed in the drag equation, and what's left is the drag coefficient, which should give a straight line at high speed if nothing shady is going on. You can see that the first three stars form a straight line, but the drag coefficient starts to increase abruptly at the fourth star at around Mach 0.85. This is the effect of wave drag, also called transonic drag or compressibility drag. At its top speed of Mach 0.9, around one third of the F86 drag is wave drag. Simply put, wave drag comes from the creation of shockwaves when the speed of sound is exceeded. So, how come shockwaves are created when the aircraft is subsonic at Mach 0.85? Taking the wing as an example, it generates lift thanks to the higher speed of the air over the top of the wing compared to the bottom of the wing. This means that the air accelerates when it reaches the wing, and that's how shockwaves are created when the aircraft is still subsonic. The speed at which the aircraft begins to experience shockwaves and wave drag is called the critical Mach number. The critical Mach number depends on wing thickness and wing sweep angle, among other things. The P-38, with its very thick wing, has a very low critical Mach number, while the MiG-17 achieved significantly higher speeds over the MiG-15 with the same engine just by sweeping the wings to 45 degrees instead of 35 degrees. Did Gaijin model the wave drag of the F-86 correctly? Let's find out. On the left is the same graph as before, and on the right is the same type of graph, but with a bunch of other aircraft, including the F-86. To compare the graphs, you need to look at the beginning of the highlighted F-86 curve between Mach 0.85 and Mach 0.9.
you can see that the curves look very similar. Good job gauging. On the graph on the right, you can see how the subsonic planes saw a massive increase in drag as they neared Mach 1, hence why it was known as the sound barrier. Next, let's see if the F-86 can go supersonic in a dive. In a dive, the F-86 has 6 tons of mass to add to its 2 tons of thrust to counter drag. Will that be enough to go supersonic? The F-86 barely manages to go supersonic in a dive. This dive and another dive with the engine turned off gives us two more stars to add to our collection. Near Mach 1, the drag coefficient is four times higher than the drag coefficient without wave drag. That means that 75% of the drag is wave drag. The following applies to every aircraft, including supersonics. Don't climb near Mach 1. It's not efficient. I think this is my most technical video yet. I hope you followed and understood most of my explanations, and I hope my graphs made it easier to understand what I was saying. Even though this video was time consuming to make, I enjoyed making it and learning more about the fascinating subject at the same time. Thanks for watching!